I have searched through all the earth, no one like you. Only you are wonderful, true, and never leaving God. I lay my life before your throne. Only you are wonderful, true, and never leaving God. I have searched through all the earth, no one like you. Only you are wonderful, true, and never leaving God. I lay my life. For your throne, and I have searched through all the earth. There's no one like you. Only you are wonderful, true and ever living God. I lay my life before your throne. Only you. Only you are wonderful, true and never leaving God. I said you are I said you are the earth, no one, one like you. Only you are wonderful, only you are wonderful, true and never leaving God. True and ever living God. 
your name oh god father we appreciate you for the gift of god we receive this day with joy and thanksgiving precious redeemer we thank you for the opportunity to look into your word father we pray for the help of the spirit of god lord we ask you may grant unto us entrance into your word we pray lord god almighty that you make our lives better as we look into this law of liberty in the mighty name of jesus Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Praise the Lord. We have before us the topic, Manasseh, or maybe I should say King Manasseh. We are considering King Manasseh this morning. Before I begin, I'd like to do a short introduction. Anytime we mention the name a king when well, anytime we consider or we want to look at a king we must know that we are looking at somebody that is very very powerful very powerful the institution of kingship in every environment it goes with honor it goes with respect it goes with power it goes with authority so Wherever you see a king, you consider the king with awe, with respect, with regard, with authority. So as we are looking at King Manasseh today, we are going to look at the story of a man who never learned from the story of his father. And that is why it is important for our children today to be attentive no matter how young they may be as they grow up they must be attentive they must consider the things they see you know in their parents whether it be good or it be bad and i also want to say that it is not automatic that when a father or a mother behaves very well that the son or the or the daughter will also behave very well it is not automatic you know or just like some people will say that it is not cast in stone that you find children of parents that are very good to behave also very good that is why it behoves every parent not only to teach and to train their children to learn the good things of the lord praise the lord praise the name of the lord so i like somebody to help me to read we have i have two major references but we are going to read one of it there is one of it that is very detailed we have 2 Kings 21, 1 to 16. We have 2 Corinthians chapter 33 from verses 1 to 20. I like somebody who has a microphone, maybe somebody from the choir, to read 2 Chronicles chapter 33 for me from verses 1 to 20. 2 Chronicles 33, 1 to 20. Built again the high places, which 
Thank you very much, my sister. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We can see from the story of Manasseh that has been read that Manasseh was just 12 years old when he became king. Manasseh was given birth to by Ezekiah. We all know the story of Ezekiah. Ezekiah gave birth to Manasseh when he was about 42 years old. And Manasseh came to the throne at exactly 12 years old. And you notice that the age, 12 years, was a year that we consider to be Manasseh was an infant at the time he ascended the throne. But if Manasseh had observed his father when his father was on the throne, almost immediately that he was born, as he grew up, he would have learned a number of things. But Manasseh never learned the things that he was supposed to learn. Manasseh was the only one in Judah that reigned for a long time. Manasseh reigned for a long time. Despite the fact that Manasseh was an evil king. Hallelujah. We would consider as human beings, we may even think that 
because Manasseh was an evil king, one would see that almost immediately that he starts to reign, God will just wipe him off. That is not the way God deals with people. And today, there are so many people on planet Earth who are evil. They do all forms of evil, all forms of abomination, and they are still living. Some of them may have somewhat prosperity around them, and people will wonder, why is it that this person that is evil, this person that is very bad, that is leading a very terrible life, and is still surviving? But you see, I believe that what we, we have seen in the life of Manasseh is a proof of the graciousness of God unto mankind. And the Bible says, God is long-suffering, and that we should not count the long-suffering of God for what? For slackness. God is not slack. God gives opportunity to people to change their life and their attitude as they live. And God will also make provisions for people as they live. The provision of direction, the provision of the word of God, the provision of a guide. Because in the days of Manasseh, just as we have read, God provided the prophets. The prophets were there teaching the people what the people were supposed to do when the Lord removed the people of Israel from Egypt, one of the significant things that God made them to know was that they should not serve another God. They should not serve another. It was a primary commandment that God gave the children of Israel. And God did not fail also to say that to the children of Israel, that the people whom I am driving away from the land which I have given you, the Etite, the Hivite, the Canaanite, the Amorite, all of these people, I am driving them away in order that you may occupy their land because of, of the abomination they have committed. Hallelujah. But Manasseh decided to pollute the temple of the Lord. The Bible says, even the high places that his father had destroyed, Manasseh rebuilt it. And Manasseh behaved as though, what will God do? Hallelujah. And that is the way some of the Christians today behave. People come to you. People counsel you. People advise you. People talk to you. People show you the word of God and, you know, entreat you not to behave in the way and the manner in which you are behaving. But, no. They should mind their business. They should mind their business. People should leave you alone. People should, don't, people should not bother you. But you see, it is important for us as people of God today to allow people whom God has sent to our lives to bother us so that a terrible situation and circumstance will not bother our lives in the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. I know that we may not want to say amen. But I pray, I pray that we will say amen. As I was studying this scripture yesterday, I sat down. Because anytime I have a preaching engagement, days ahead, I will be thinking about it. I will read the scripture. I will think about it. I will ruminate about it. Even if I am sleeping. Even if I am sleeping. That is what I will be thinking about. All of a sudden, as I sat down, just where I was sitting, I saw a flash before me of somebody that sat like a king and he sat 
put his hand in this manner. And somebody was behaving rudely in a way. And I asked myself, ah, ah, what's the meaning of this? And I found out that most of the time, the Lord God of heaven, some of the time, won't bother us. Why? For our lives to be checked. For our lives to be guided. For our lives to be directed. All do is to just wait and watch. I just pray. It is my prayer. Because as, I, as, it, as it was dawning on me, I took time to pray for myself also. Why? God will never struggle with any man. Even this, I think the scripture says it. God will not struggle with a man alone, forever. But what I know is that the Spirit of God will try as much as possible to trouble a Christian that is not living right. So that it will not be hidden that you are not guided. It will not be hidden that nobody is giving you a nudge that the way that you are treading is a Oh, it is possible for us to say that Manasseh, because Manasseh was a young man. Yes, it is true. Some of the time, when people come soon to honor and a glorious estate, it enters into their head. It enters into their head. But very wise people don't allow it to enter into their head. I remember a young when we were in school during my A-level days. Because that young boy did very well. His father bought him a very big motorcycle. You know this big motorcycle that has a car's, a car's tire. That big bike, this power bike. That's the kind of motorcycle this boy was riding. But you see, we know this boy before that time. But at that time, the boy became extra, extra humble. I was shocked. Some of us believe because his father was a dealer of Suzuki. So his father ordered that motorcycle for him. And he became very quiet, became very, very well behaved. But in some, in some other climb, when you see a young student, maybe with a car, you see the way he behaves, he won't come to class. He will, he will absent himself from significant uh, occasions in school. And be, and be misbehaving in different kind of ways. So it depends. If you are a young man and God is helping you and you are progressing, it is important for you to ask yourself that there is somebody behind what you are doing. There is somebody behind your success. There is somebody behind your survivor. Hallelujah. But you see, People believe that things are okay. It is by their power. It is by their authority. Manasseh became king and believed that, no, he is king. And you know that the word of a king is authority, is power. And he started behaving in different ways. The Bible says he built altars of bar, not just in the high places. He built altars of bar in the high places. And the Bible says the aggravation of the sin of Manasseh. He came into the temple to build a altar of bar and the altar of Astoros in the temple. That was an affront, the greatest affront that a man will ever do to God. And you will ask me, what is the relevance of these things in our days? In this dispensation, you see ministers of God that have suspended the word of God that should be lifted up in the house of the Lord and built up the altar of mammon. There is a video 
that is that has gone viral now. Yes, how many of you want to donate one one million? Come, come out, come out, come out, come out. I will make you rich. This year, on I eight, I will make you rich. And he said, hey, Usher, please leave the people. I am in charge now. I'm, I'm in charge. A minister of God in the house of God will say that he is in charge, not the Holy Spirit in charge anymore. I'd like to tell you there are several ways by which people are building bar and asteroids in the temple of the Lord today. But I tell you what, the Lord God Almighty is not sleeping. Are you with me? The Lord God Almighty is not sleeping. People have tended to lift up the altar of materialism. People have associated spirituality to materialism. If you have and you are prosperous, then you are a good Christian. God is answering your prayers. It's a lie of the devil. Are you listening to me? It is a lie of the devil. Big lie. That is the, the strange altar that the devil has made people to bring to the, to the altar of the Lord and erect it. And people come to worship it. So when you go to house of God, thank God for Christ's chapel. When you go into some places to worship, you see the way materialism is worshipped. You see the way street God, the God of money, the God of mammon is adored. Greet yourself as you stand. Greet yourself. Hold yourself and give yourself a holy hug. Promoting evil. The Bible says, Manasseh promoted enchantment and witchcraft. Witchcraft. When somebody stands up and begins to say things, things that are not in the Bible, it is witchcraft. It is manipulation. The height of manipulation of the mind of the people of God, contrary to the word of God, it is high-level witchcraft. He said, this year 2018, you will become rich if you donate one million. If you donate one thousand dollars, you will be rich in the house of the Lord. I see that is what will take the people into the kingdom of God. And why? All of us, if you look at it, all of us, we are kings. Are we not? We are kings in ourselves. You do what you like. You consider the things that you want to do as a king. And nobody disturbs you. But I tell you, just as Ecclesiastes 6 chapter 12, maybe the last verse. Whatsoever you desire to do for yourself, to enjoy, do it. Do everything. Enjoy everything, but understand, God Almighty will judge you in all of these things that you are doing. Hallelujah. As king and as, as God's priest, you are free. Just like Manasseh was free. You can do what you like, but let me tell you, something that will make you not to do what you like will come shortly. People, when people, you know, come to the consciousness of the fact that God is the judge of all, they think about God's judgment when everybody gets to heaven. Sorry. The judgment of God starts here on earth. Hallelujah. There are things that I would not like to say here, but I have had people go to the altar of God to say profane things, things that are profane. They will, they will embellish it and, and wrap it with sugar-coated mouth so that they can win the support of the youth. Ask me where they are today. 
they are gone. There are some of them that are still around. But you know what God is doing? God is pushing them down into oblivion. Even while they are still alive. I just pray that you will not allow God to push you into oblivion in the name of Jesus. Hey, Shami. My own is, I will do what the Spirit of God is making me to say. The desire of God is that man will have life and have life how? Abundantly. Abundantly. When the scripture says that, go and read different kinds of commentary. I didn't see abundant money, abundant prosperity in that. But mind you, that is not to say that to have money or to prosper is evil. It is a heart that is drawn to it that makes it a God. Are you with me? Hallelujah. Manasseh continued in this until his cup was full. And what happened when his cup was full? I will read verse 11. Wherefore the Lord brought upon them the captains of the host of the king of Assyria, which took Manasseh, which took Wu. Eh? He took Manasseh, a king, a king. He took Manasseh. Among the what? Among the what? I want you to follow me. That's why I'm asking you. So that you will understand the seriousness of the arrest of Manasseh. If that to that time, Manasseh felt he could do anything. He could behave anyhow. But when the time of the arrest of Manasseh came, how was he arrested? The Bible says the king of Assyria took him. How? Among the thorns. And if you read other scripture, particularly if you go to Sec uh, Second Kings, the Bible says he was, he was taken with a hook. Where? Eh? In his mouth. He was taken with a hook. And if you take a human being with a hook, how do you carry him? You drag him. You drag him. The only animal that I know that they normally take with a hook is a pig. Is a pig. Because you cannot tie a rope around the neck of a pig. Is it possible? Eh? You clip the mouth and put a hook and drag it because it's very stubborn. It won't move. Why was it that it was inside the town that they were dragging Manasseh? Manasseh ran when he perceived that the Assyrians were around to arrest him. If we were there, maybe we would have asked him, why are you now running away? Are you not the king? Are you not the one in charge? Why are you running away? They arrested Manasseh at the back of his house, inside his garden. And you know, all of the things that are in the garden, the flowers, the beautiful flowers. If you see a very beautiful flower, a very beautiful flower, if you check the stem of beautiful flowers, what do you see? Eh? Tons. Tons. They dragged him on the, on the tons and took him to Babylon. And when they took him to Babylon, it would have been better if Manasseh was made a prince in, in Babylon. He was put in prison in Babylon. He was locked up in the dungeon in Babylon. And I don't need to tell you the kind of treatment that Manasseh will be put to 
in the in the prison. Before long, inside the prison, it did not take time before Manasseh realized that ah, a king in a prison. Yes. Why? Oh. Oh, my show. There is this song that came to my heart yesterday. I won't sing it, but I will tell you. I, I, I almost became something else when that song came to my heart. I just stood up and started shouting in the whole house. You may think you are the one that is reigning because you don't have problem, things are going smooth, and you are behaving. You are behaving that there is no God that is reigning over your life. You had better check yourself. When it dawned on Manasseh, the Bible says he humbled himself. He humbled himself. One of the prayers I always pray for myself is that in my life, me, me, Dora, me, Loju. I'm sorry for those who don't understand Yoruba. That's the easiest way to say it. That you will not see yourself as more than what you are. The scripture even says, you say, what are we? Are we not eating vessel? But you see people, you know, just come in and look at everybody. Yeah. Uh, you, you, you. As if they are God. I look at some of them. I smile. I smile. And you know what? All of such attitude and behavior is a facard. You know, I want me, you know, you know, I'm sure. But I'm about the public place. 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 But I tell you, don't ever allow yourself to be cowed down because of such people. You are a child of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Immediately, Manasseh, who refused the ministry of prophets, he did not allow the prophet to preach, to teach, and to guide the people. God told them, if you obey my commandment, nobody will remove you from this good land that I have brought you. Nobody. But he turned their heart. The Bible says, he seduced the people. Excuse me, who is seducing you? Who is seducing you? To turn away from the way of life. You better turn away from that person. One of the most terrible things that is happening to Christians today is the spirit of seduction. And as I tell you, as I use the word seduction, I'm not talking about sexual sin. That's what you may be, your act may be thinking. That's not the only thing that seduction talks about. When people take your act away from the way of the law, to take your act away unto things that are that are frivolous things that are not of eternal value and you are following after you have been seduced paul said to a group of christians was it ah it was paul that was asking them who has beguiled you the Gal god bless you my brother the galatians who are beguiled you. Who has beguiled you? Beloved brethren, I pray you will not allow anybody to beguile you. They will paint the gospel in, with good packaging. They will say, what is this that you are doing? Christianity is no longer what you are doing. You package yourself. You pa is there anything like that in the Bible? Is there anything like that in the Bible? When you hear people talking like that, they are the descendants of the fallen Manasseh. Are you with me? Don't listen to them. Don't listen to them. 
Manasseh agreed against prophet Isaiah. At that time, Isaiah was old. He took Isaiah. The Bible says he saw, he saw Isaiah asunder. You know what it means to saw something? Eh? Oh, people are not with me. Have you, have you been at a carpenter's workshop before? Eh? When a carpenter is sawing a wood, you will see the dust of the wood splitting out. Because the way Isaiah was killed, he was sawn asunder. They cut him to two. A prophet of God in his old age. And I said, Oh, that. I will love you. I love you. I love you. I sorrow, no sorrow. I love you. But when the hand of the Lord handled him, his, his number seven came up. And the Bible says in verse 12, and when he was in affliction, he did what? He besought the Lord, his God, and humbled himself greatly before the God of his father. And prayed to him, and he was entreated of him, and had his supplication, and brought him again to Jerusalem into his kingdom. Then Manasseh knew that there was God. Hallelujah. Ah. God is merciful. God, God is merciful. This story makes me to remember the story of the prodigal son the boy in arrogance was father and asked of his own wife father was alive took all his inheritance and went to live a riotous life who is a father today that will receive back a child that is of nature but it is to tell us the graciousness of the Lord God Almighty. God accepted of Manasseh. God saw, I mean the word saw, and excuse me, my brethren, God wants to see in every one of us the, the sincerity of our heart as we serve him. No matter the things that we do, what God wants to see is the sincerity of our heart. The repentance of Manasseh was sincere. God said, okay, I have heard you. And God did not only hear him, God heard him, and God restored him. Are you here today? Feel that your sin is just too much. How can I repent from all of the evil that I have been doing? I tell you, there is a God that is ready to deliver you of your sin. The Bible says, even if your sin is as red, as what? As crimson. The scripture says in Isaiah, I think Isaiah chapter, chapter verse 18, it says, Come, let us reason together. Let us reason together. Manasseh reasoned at that time. He reasoned at that time and returned unto the Lord. And the Lord because the Lord saw the sincerity of his heart back to Jerusalem. And you see, it is possible 
for us today to say, hey God, I'm sorry. Ye, yeah, forgive me. Ah, ye yeah, God, I'm sorry. Le sakarabababa. I'm sorry. Ye. Yeah. But I yeah. the Bible says, show me a tree. Show me a tree. And tell you what that tree, whether it be good or what or bad. I'm paraphrasing. If good fruit, just like John the Baptist was telling the people that came to him in the wilderness, he said, show forth the fruit that befits what? The Bible says, now, after this, he built a wall. Hallelujah. When I was reading that, ooh, I became excited. Manasseh built a wall without the city of David on the west side of in the valley, even the entering in at the fish gates and encompassed about offer and raised it up a very great eye and put a wall in all the first cities of Judah and he took away the string God. Let's talk about the fence. All the people that are around your life that can tell you, eh, sister, what you are doing is no good. You chase them away. All the people that will say, hey, this way that you are behaving, bro, is not good. Though. You quarreled with them. Somebody will go and say, hey, excuse me, this and this and this and this, watch it. Oh. You stylishly look for an occasion to quarrel with them. Yeah? No problem. What you are doing stylishly is to, by yourself, break down the wall of defense that God has put around your life by yourself. But when God restored Manasseh, he quickly, quickly, for him before, what concerns him about Jerusalem? Somebody that defied the temple, what concerns the security of the temple? He now began to build a wall all around the city. And he did not only build a wall, he ensured that he put soldiers to watch for the safety of the city. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If today you are turning to the Lord, you are changing from what you have been, you must consciously build a wall around. You must consciously allow the Holy Spirit that has been a check over your life to continue its work. You must allow your other brethren that have been expressing love and concern for your upliftment to their work. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I can continue on and on but we don't have all the time. What is the essence of, of all of these things that we are talking about? The essence of the things that we are talking about is that the God that we serve is a gracious God, is a merciful God, is a merciful God. Is there anyone here who feel that Oh, your God is ready to accept you back only if you are ready to sincerely repent of all your sins. Only if you are ready to repent of all of your sins, God also will take you back. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I want you to note some clothes. When, if you look at the scripture, the Bible talks about the barrier of kings. Where does the Bible say kings are buried? Most of the kings that, are, that died, they are buried in the sepulcher of kings. Is that not what the Bible says? But where was Manasseh buried? The Bible 
says, Manasseh was buried in his house. Up till now, I am still thinking. Ah, ah, why? But this man repented. This man repented now. He too should have been buried with the other kings in the sepulcher of the king. But the only conjecture that is coming to my mind, are you with me? Is that, eh, eh. no, that type of honor is only given to those who respect the everlasting God from the beginning. And that was the kind of barrier that Manasseh had. Beloved brethren, what do you want to do in respect of your life? Let us pray. I'd like everyone to speak to the Lord. I don't know you, but God knows you. I want you to pray. I don't want you to despair. The Lord God Almighty will help you. He says, I will know you even unto the end of the age. I want you to speak to God. I want you to ask the Lord to uphold you and of his righteousness. I want you to ask the Lord to help you as you continue on this journey. You may be very young, but what kind of heart is inside you? Of arrogance, you look at elderly people and you, and you look at them as if, who is this one? You better pray for forgiveness of your sins. Manasseh felt that as a king, he can behave anyhow, but until the hand of the Lord reached unto him, he was dragged on thorns. You will not be dragged on thorns in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Precious Redeemer, we thank you, Lord. We worship you. We adore you. We thank you because you are a loving God. God. We thank you because you are a gracious God. Heavenly Father, day after day we pray, cause the power of your spirit to be our help, to be our guide. Keep us, uphold us, even unto the saving of our soul, ultimately in the name of Jesus. Lord, I commit as many, O oh God, that must have prayed this morning for repentance. Heavenly Father, I ask that you will uphold them. I ask that you will keep them. I pray for the spirit of boldness. Let them be bold to turn away from all forms of evil in the name of Jesus. You heavenly Father. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Can we give Jesus another clap of praise? Praise the Lord. Thank God for Pastor Allah. We appreciate you. And it is a prayer that the Lord will replenish you in Jesus' name. Shall we welcome those worshiping here for the first time? If you are worshiping in this chapel for the first time, we want to welcome you. Can I see your hands? Can you stand on your feet? Praise the Lord. Please stand up. Praise the Lord. You're in peace. You are welcome to this family. Christ Chapel family. We are happy to fellowship with you. You are welcome to this family, Christ Chapel family. Praise be the Lord, joy and peace. You are welcome to this family, Christ Chapel family. Happy to fellowship with you. You are happy, happy. Happy to fellowship with you. We are happy. 
Counselors who want to pray with you and know a little bit more. The ushers will give you some forms, fill them. They are for our records. Then we have a token of love for you people. But greatest of all, if you are not born again, please don't leave these four walls until you settle that. Tomorrow is always too late. The Lord bless you as you worship with us in Jesus' name. Amen. One of our brothers, Adela Wong, the Adela Wongs, lost their father at the age of 70. This will be on the notice board later. But let us remember them in prayer also support them. The burial will be 16th and 17th. God being with us. So please keep that in your mind. Our children's camp is opening after service. So continue to remember them in prayers. And those who had in mind to donate either money or kind, please do that. And again, it's our welfare Sunday when we bring things to help our brothers. So whatever you put in the offering bag indicates welfare if we can have it for those who need them badly the lord bless you as you do that we will close by singing in 187 we will sing the first the third and the fourth verses one three four We will stand standing and worship the Lord with our tithes, with our offerings, with our pledges, as the Lord leads him. Don't go away. We have 
the Bible study beginning immediately after the service. All by our heads. Our Father, we want to bless. Thank you for the way you spoke to us. You have blessed us today. We ask that you replenish the bank where our brother took and multiply his ministry. In Jesus' name. And those words will continue to upwell in us, to lead us onto the path of righteousness, all and continuously, the days that are ahead. In Jesus' name we pray. We thank you for these gifts that we have brought to your house. We ask God that you bless them and speak them to meet your needs. In Jesus' name. Those who have not to give, we ask that you give so that they also will be able to worship you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Because our dear Father, surround us with your presence as we face the days that are ahead and cause continuously your glory to be our strength. Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Can we say shortness and mercy shall follow us? The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, God the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, be with us now and forevermore. Amen.